You're listening to Beauty, Strength, and Dominance, the official podcast of Lingerie Fighting Championships. And now, here's your host, Michael Larkin! Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another edition of Beauty, Strength, and Dominance, the official LFC Lingerie Fighting Championships podcast. My name is Mike Larkin, and joining me once more, a familiar face to the show and a face I'm really, really glad to be seeing again, LFC fan, the one and only, Miss Stephanie Ferreira. Stephanie, it's a pleasure to privilege. How are you, love? I'm doing well. How are you, love? I am good. I am good. Very, very good. LFC has been doing the damn thing, coming off a big event back in May, LFC 36 Booty Camp 4. I'm doing my ring announcing thing thing. Everybody is really showcasing on top with LFC. We're on Roku, which also you can see your first interview on and all the great LFC podcasts on Roku. Your face on Roku. I saw your face and wow, I feel like, hey, Arnold, Ronnie Matthews, baby. But nah, here we are. And, and Steph, I got to give you kudos and credit here, man, because you have been taking a lot of exceptional photos and you've been really shining doing your modeling thing thing man <laughs> thanks so much i appreciate that you're very welcome no and we we're, we'll, we'll start it off hot here man because we, we we go into a lot of great topics and i mean we're both big into what we do we're very passionate so you ma'am as you always do for those who have not checked out Stephanie on instagram you do a lot of great lives as well very into what you're into really talk about the industry what you're doing from modeling and just having a damn good time at the same time miss Ferreira. so you put out a great post and it was also very informative and it put out a lot of great feelers out there about what goes on in the modeling world because a lot of people in the modeling world We'll say what they will about, you know, favors and what they do to certain photographers, bada bing, bada boom. For you, putting that out there, and I commented talking about people don't realize the layers of sexiness and internal and external beauty. I want to talk about this with you here because, God dang, man, isn't it a shame to see something like that still going on in today's day and age? We're in 2022, and there's still so God much God dang ignorance out there. It's such a tricky subject because I find, like, I'm... I'm many things. I'm a wife, I'm a mother, I'm a daughter, I'm a niece. And yet I post a simple picture, even in terms of family members looking over, they see a picture and instead of getting support, what you get is um, you get resistance and pushback. Mm -hmm. And I know that I know like I'm not a lingerie fighting champion. I'm not a scrapper. Although as of lately, I feel like I am, I have become a scrapper, yep. but I find that now it's 2022 and, you know, women are well established in their careers. We can have it. We can have it our way. We can have families and we can do business at the same time. But yet people don't realize that with our pictures being put out there as a paid model, I'm not an OnlyFans model. I don't do nudes because <laughs> ill. Like, I don't want to see male pictures coming my way, but the content that I put out there is so that another woman can be inspired to feel good about herself. So it gets lost in translation. And it's such a struggle when you put something out there and people, instead of saying, wow, this is your perspective, I appreciate it. They kind of say, well, this is what you're actually saying without saying it. You're implying this. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, I want to become, I want to become some of my favorites. I want to become a fighter, and I want to knock them out because they're not willing to listen. They just want to run with the idea. It's so, so well, no, that's so funny. I don't mean to cut you off, but that's the thing too. Now is people either don't listen or they're to quote Ricky Bobby. You know, what's the implications of your actions? So, th what's implications mean? We're no longer friends. So that <laughs> mindset gets into. <laughs> Of the implication side of things and the fact is I've experienced it myself and I love my family, but I also have family members that are kind of strict towards the Catholic realm. It's not that, you know, it's going towards porn. It's going towards what have you. It's it's another layer of beauty. It's another layer of art and another layer of your craft that people just automatically here's this. Oh, but you must be doing this and going this way. It's no, no, I'm on my straight and on my path and this is what I'm doing. So I feel you. I mean, right. it, it falls hand in hand with LFC too. Go ahead. I noticed that like even with LFC, I'm sure it happens where, you know, if 
a young woman or even a more seasoned vet with lots of fight of fighting experience has to spend time with a coach who's the opposite sex. Mm -hmm. And suddenly, oh, you guys are spending so much time together. I bet you guys are doing the dirty. You guys are doing the nasty. And you kind of sit there and go, no wonder why these women are going to get frustrated, take it out on an opponent. Because at least they have that luxury of taking it out on an opponent. Right. No, I mean, you know, it's funny you bring that up too, because like a lot of that has even happened, like surprisingly with me, because I hang out with all these ladies. I do, you know, I have hands on, you know, podcasts and what have you. A lot of them think you're like, oh, I'm doing favors of my own right. And this has happened to you. It, it, it's, and it's nuts because from the male point of view, and I'll say this, a guy just can't be, and I'm sure it can be very vice versa here. And this is a very important topic. A guy can be appreciative. A guy can be very respectful and loving and kind and confident and really uplift a female. It doesn't mean like I just want to have sex with them directly. That's the misconception. Not everything has to go into the bedroom. Everything doesn't have to be behind closed doors. What you see is what you get. Even in front of your face, it doesn't have to have those implications like we mentioned, or it doesn't have to be perceived in a certain light, which it's not. Even with that, like to add to it, I've even noticed a lot of things. People see the pictures or they see the championship fight. Mm -hmm. Where, you know, my Jolene Hex, you know, just completely knocks out the opponent, you know, respect to the opponent. But, you know, Jolene has a special place in my heart. Mm -hmm. Now, just imagine the rejection that she must have faced once upon a time. Going to a trainer who she was looking for help for guidance and being rejected for whatever reason. And you don't see that on social media you don't see that on the big models pages you don't see that with celebrities you just see the success story you don't see the support that goes into that individual i'll be honest with you my model uh my modeling pictures are risque but before i post them i show them to my spouse and i say babe look at what i did what do you think you know kind of too much not enough what do you think is there a good in between and People don't realize that as soon as I post it, it's out there. There's no taking it back. I can delete it. It's never going away. Just like in the sports world, any athlete, the one time that they win, or if they win multiple times, oh, you know, you won, that's great. Don't let it get to your head. But the second they lose, people love to drag that out for so long. And all it does is just create more fire, more inspiration for the individual, the athlete, um, the wife, the daughter, the sister to keep going. So. All right. And well, that's the thing, too, as well, which, first of all, I'm going to say this. When it comes to Jolene, like you mentioned, one of your favorites, the Krav Maga expert, the current LFC champion, the current European champ, the booty can't champ champ chain holder she's one in a million one in the same and i look at it from the stance too as well here's a woman studied the krav maga but also at the same time very multifaceted sessions wrestler fetish model boom 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 you'd have to think and i could say this as well like there's a lot of the girls that people and guys and what have you we see just those particular images we see the fights and it will judge in one perceived notion of just oh god it's just it's risque like you mentioned risque photos risque fighting what have you Everything is going to be complaining with risque. Like, I've seen your photos, and I'm going to say this right now as your friend and with the utmost sincere respect. Your voluptuosity factor showing, whether it be in lingerie, you're dressed like Chucky, you're cosplaying Star Trek, hello. It's one of those things where you can look at an image, you can see the difference that goes into the image. You're applying to many different demographics and subsets with how you're feeling with your imagery. So, I mean, it's a jail of all trades, so to speak, but I think with each image shows beauty, it shows a story, and it shows really what a lot of people are appealed to and really find a lot of gravitation towards. I appreciate you <laughs> saying that so much. <laughs> Just to hear it coming from a male perspective, it's so much appreciated because as of lately, I feel like I've been getting a lot of pushback. I've been well, but the pushback and the resistance that I've been getting has been a little bit much. And what people don't see is, my downtime, my sad time where I'm told I'm not large enough, I'm not small enough, I'm told so many things. And then what people don't see is the prep the day before, earlier in the day to even get ready for these shoots. A lot of the times if there's makeup artists involved, they're gonna do your makeup in a way that you kind of say, I look nothing like myself. I know that when I see these photos, it's gonna look like a high edited, perfect 10 out of 10 
version of myself where I'm unrecognizable. And then there are also times where I'm doing my own makeup, which is just mascara, a little bit of eye cream under the eyes and lip gloss, where people say, you know, you kind of aimed a little low with your look, but then they see the pictures and they're like, wow, is this how you actually look? And you kind of sit there and go, ladies and gents, I'm a real person. I have real feelings. And when I'm going into a shoot, I have to go in with a clear mind. I go in with a clear conscience. And I have to be focused on what the photographer is expecting of me because I'm going in to do a job. Just like how you're doing this podcast right now, there are expectations that you have to meet. There's a demographic that we have to please and entertain. And we know that there's always gonna be one person who's gonna sit there and criticize it for whatever reason, because it's just not appealing to them. And because it doesn't appeal to them, they feel the urge to say, hey, you know, it doesn't appeal to me. Why do you have this person on? Why do you talk about this and not this instead? Meanwhile, it gets to that point where there needs to be that level of communication and understanding. If you are the one who's hiring me to do your podcast, I expect you to tell me what your expectations are so I can meet it. But if you go in and say, you know, you can kind of wing it, do whatever you want. Don't worry about anything. I'm going to wing it. I'm going to do whatever I please. First off, stop giving my secrets out to the people. No, I'm kidding. But I mean, <laughs> no, that, <laughs> no, I agree. And, but the thing too is when you're going into podcasting or a shoot, and I say this, and I'll, I'll say this right now. When I talk about beauty, strength, and dominance, when I talk about being the representation of your presentation, people understand where I'm coming from. There's going to be that 50-50 of, okay, I get what he's saying. I get what we want. Or then there's the other part. It's just like, that's just words. Or they don't understand it, even if you break it down to them. But you need to understand as well when you're going into something, it all relates and coincides and correlates because I also look at it like this. When you're doing a podcast, you're putting out there the platform to, for them to tell your story, for people to provide quality content because you're going to resonate. You're going to strike a chord with somebody. That's what you need to look at with what you're doing. And I also look at it from the LFC side of things like girls are striking a chord. They're evoking emotions, looking beautiful. It's empowering. It's sexy. Perfect example. And I'll bring another one of our favorites. Ty Emery made her bare knuckle fighting championship debut. Love Ty Emery. Woman went from electrician, LFL. Woman is looking to do it all. She's looking to do LFC. She just did bare knuckle fighting championship. Woman is the talk of the town, had an impressive victory. But what came after post fight, she came out and said, hey, here's my tatas, titties and violence, putting it out there. And here we yeah, are. Yeah. She got people talking. Yeah. And it's funny because... I've noticed that even with resistance, when people are speaking not so kindly, whether it's about an athlete, the person that you know, the girl living down the street, your neighbor, whatever the case may be, the girl at the grocery store, I always find that the people that criticize and say the most resistance and ill things are often the people who are craving the most attention. They don't have that confidence to put it out there. They don't have that engagement, that interaction capability to say, you know, this is me, give me a little bit of attention. Instead they say, you know, about this Michael Larkin guy, I heard he's a super nice guy, but is he a super nice guy? Well, if I have to mention you mm -hmm. for people to talk to me, you already know that I'm craving attention, but I'm gonna use you to get that attention. Right. I digress. No, I feel you. No. <laughs> well, that's the thing, too. No, like when we're talking about this podcast, you know, we need to go into what we're doing. And I got to say, I got to please all you pervs out there. And I'm only kidding. I would never say that. <laughs> but <laughs> that's the thing, too. No, I, I, no I, I'm right there with you because it's like you have to talk about being a super nice guy. Like for me, am I, I'm going to say right now, I've always been very upfront about put, really putting myself out there in a positive light and treating people with respect, nice professionalism. Have I ever been a dick? Oh, yeah. But I mean, I don't go out there and really want to be a dick. And have I been a dick? That's very where I got my point across, even when I'm in the wrong. Yes, we all have. We're human. But also at the end of the day, that's what you need to do, whether you're doing the modeling, what have you. You need to work with people. And that's the importance of everything. Accommodation, comfortability and working with people like we were talking about. People have the perceived images. Popular example. Willow Nightingale is a professional wrestler on AEW. For those that are not familiar with Willow Nightingale, she's a bigger girl. But she can move. She's very athletic for her size and her stature. And some guy wrote on Twitter, you know what? Maybe you should lose 20 pounds. And here's the best way how she went about it. She just wrote, no, thank you with the old little, like, you know, the emoji, like really smiling. 
that's the way to handle it. You know what I'm saying? Because you and yeah, your yeah. right, Steph, I'm going to say this. We talk about the voluptuosity factor. I see you doing your thing. You're loving yourself. But also at the same time, you're confident in yourself. So that is stuff that I admire. And we talked about sexiness as many different layers. That right there is one of the key layers and top proponents of confidence. Sexiness, baby. Sexiness and confidence. The confidence has to start with the foundation. Right. You have to start with the very basic. And I wish, I'll be honest with you, I'm 37. I wish I had the confidence that I had today, maybe about 17 years ago. But I didn't have that confidence back then. And maybe I wasn't meant to have that confidence back then. Because at 20, I wasn't that mature or anything like that. But now it's, I've had my children. I'm well adapted in my living. I know where I am in life and what I'm navigating towards. And the confidence comes from the people that support me, my husband, my kids, my dad, because without them, I really have no confidence. I don't have confidence in myself because I look at them, they're my inspiration. They're the reason why I wake up in the morning, why I make myself a cup of coffee or my husband makes me a cup of coffee and I get to work. And I look at what people want me to do, what's expected and what my goals are. Because one day, you know, when I'm not taking pictures anymore or I'm happily retired at a cottage somewhere with my husband and with my kids and hopefully grandkids one day, you know, I would really, it comes with the support from the family, first and foremost. And then I am very blessed with as much pushback and resistance that I faced. I have so much support from wonderful individuals like you. You know, and it, it means so much to me because, you know, I, I get the emails from LFC. I get the announcements about what's coming and I genuinely feel like I'm part of this LFC family. You know, and that inspires me, you know, when you reached out to me and said, OK, let's do this podcast. We're ready. Let's do it. You know, it gave me such inspiration because even though we weren't talking for a while because life got busy, we, you know, pandemic, you know, stuff started to go back to normal. You know, it's that kind of inspiration that really boosts my confidence. Because when I open up my Instagram, I see Michael Larkin at the top of my page. And it's like, let's see what he's doing, how he's doing. Let me look in. Let me check in. And with the whole confidence thing, there are days where I wake up and I'm like, oh, my God, I woke up. I look like this. Oh, my God, I'm not ready for the day. What am I going to do? How do I start? And then there are days that I get up where, you know, I have a whole plan from morning to when it's time for bed. And, you know, I just have to execute it. I have to go in and do what I need to do. As you shouldn't. I think it all starts, like you mentioned, the foundation and everything that we have from confidence and how we wake up in the morning. And I'll be honest with you, folks. I've been very open about it. I was not about a year and a half, two years ago, and I still put videos out there because I want to inspire people with our words and actions here. I was not in the best place at all. I was not right here and here. If you're not right mentally and spiritually, man, then you really need to go out of your way. And I'll say this right now. Go out of your way. Find what makes you happy. Do this, what have you, because then there's toxicity that comes around. And go, you go through a lot. It could be the pandemic. It could be what have you. There's something out there that's going to make people happy and just continue to really shine and grind. The way I look at it like that is, too, even from your darkest hours to your brightest of lights, it's a learning process. It's also you find out more about yourself. And you miss 37 over here. I just turned 30, so I'm welcoming myself to the club. I'm throwing <laughs> it up for the 30 club, baby. So it's <laughs> one of the stuff, and I'll say and I'll say this, as if someone who's in their 30s, this is where I'm going from the negative to the light and the evolution and the foundation as our overall beings. Once we get to our 30s, and especially when we get to our 40s, and I've said this very bluntly on this show and many past shows, we kind of don't give a shit really anymore. And the reason why I put it like that is as well, as we get older, we learn more about ourselves, we grow. And like you talk about your setbacks, everybody gets put with setbacks, you know what I'm saying? With either weight fluctuation, how we look, our appearance, our beauty, what have you. It's the stuff that when we get into our 30s, we rock it, we own it, and we love it. And that's where we are right now, man. I always I, tell people never trust anyone over 30, coined by Homer Simpson. Yes. <laughs> on the <laughs> Simpsons. I had to put that in there because you said you're now 30, so welcome to the dirty 30s. Um, but, you know, it's funny because um, I faced a couple of setbacks recently where I've lost about 20 pounds. Mm -hmm. From March to, to now, I'm weighing myself every day as orders through my doctor because he wants to make sure that there's no actual underlying health conditions. As you know, my mom passed last year in 2021. 
Um, she had a slew of health conditions. And when I was working the season, I was working for Aramark. I worked every Blue Jays home game, except for when I suffered my concussion <laughs> in May. Um, and, you know, I kind of felt a little deteriorated recently where, you know, I didn't want to do shoots anymore because people were complaining that now they could start seeing my rib cage. And, you know, it, it was almost to the point where I want to say I didn't give a shit because I was comfortable. But at the same time, when your family doctor says, you know, let's take a look, let's make sure that this is going the right way. And let's make sure that we continue to, to monitor. So today I actually went for an ultrasound and did blood work. And I actually feel more relieved now that I actually did all that versus when I made that appointment for this ultrasound and blood work. So in a way, it's almost like with the weight and, you know, I've had people say, you know, eat a sandwich recently. That's what someone actually posted on one of my um, pictures, but they sent it to me in my DM. Oh. And they're like, you know, you need to eat a sandwich. And I kind of sat there and kicked myself where I was met in the middle where it's like, do I eat the Effin sandwich like this person was suggesting that I do where you know I'm doing it because someone else wants me to do it or do I continue doing what I've been doing and you know do I put weight on or do I continue to lose weight because I'm in the middle I lost the fans that liked me when I was thicker but I also have fans now that like me when I'm smaller so I kind of sit there and go what do I do right Right. It's, it's, it's the nice and balance in between, but that's also, it's, it's, it's like you talk about, it's like a tricky subject. It's like, okay, you like me with the thickness. You're down with the thickness. Yes. That's right. I hit a little flip the script on some disturbed baby. Or do we, I was waiting for it down with the thickness <laughs> with whatever <Yes>. left. <laughs> or, or do you go the other route where it's just like, boom, you like me skinny, bada bing, bada boom. You know what I'm saying? And, and, and I mean, either way, for me, I'm, I'm an either or guy. I like women as as they are. But God dang, man, there's always going to be that subset. It's like down with the thickness or do I get down over here in other ways? Get down, get down. But the problem is, too, whether you're skinny, whether you're in the middle in between, there's always going to be someone that's going to say something no matter what. But I think if you could find that right balance, and I'm going to say right now, everybody has that balance when they're feeling good, emphasis on the good. So, I mean, as long as they're feeling that, and I think no matter where it comes, whether your weight, what have you, it works, you know, our weights fluctuate, you know, but I mean, if you feel like you're at the right boom and also health is the most important, like you said, I know you coming from the concussion, which I'm glad to see you're doing, you know, your thing. And I know you had through some tough times with your mom, God rest her soul. Same with mine. Uh, it, it's, it's interesting because I mean, through the hardships there and you don't want to do anything. Like when my mother was diagnosed with inflammatory breast cancer, I, the thing too, is you think like, and I'll say this right now, we're both close with our mothers. Uh, you don't think it's going to be your mom. You know what I'm saying? You see other mom. Then it happens to you, man. Your world gets shut down. But, you know, there's always something that goes into it, whether it be moments, memories to be created, their spirit, they're here, non-living, what have you. It's something that always has that incredible bond. And I'll say this to you again, love, respect, a whole nine. I think your mom's very proud of what you're doing. So keep on doing what you're doing. I think she's, I think she's proud too. And I know your mom's definitely proud because of everything that you are, who you've become. I'm so proud of you. Thank you. Um, Cause like I said, with this whole LFC thing, even with muscle sport, I know that I haven't been with muscle sport mag in so long, you know, I'm actually forever grateful that I was part of that family for a little while because it actually introduced me to you. Yep. And I think that's part of what I have to admit that I love the most about my journey is that even though, you know, you'll meet people and not quite agree with them or not see eye to eye, doesn't mean you're going to terminate or throw away the friendship or the relationship, but you're going to stick to those where you feel good about yourself. You feel strong and you feel support. And, you know, that's such a special thing. And I find that now, even in the athletic world, you know, you're going to be grateful for those relationships and the friendships that come and help you. And even though that person could be a potential opponent one day, um, you know, it's, it's all about the buildup. And I will say this in terms of going back to the weight. If you're not my doctor, like this is a message for the people out there who say, you know, eat a sandwich or lose 10 pounds, lose 20, whatever the case may be. If you're not my doctor, I'm not taking any advice from you. If 
you're not booking me for a photo shoot, you don't get to tell me what you think happens at these shoots. Because I'm, I'm an open book. If people have questions, I'm more than happy to answer. I'll actually give you a little bit of wisdom in terms of what's happening in my life. And our parents, our mothers, especially that we lost them, our mothers raised us so that we know ourselves the most. And there, it's not about favors. It's not about how far you can go. Because let's be honest, we were raised that if you set your mind to it, you can achieve anything. But yet people try to dumb it down. And that's when you already know that they've lost. They've lost the war amongst themselves. They've lost their own battle. But as long as we don't go down that rabbit hole, we'll be fine. Right. And I mean, it's sometimes it can be very hard to get out of said rabbit hole. But I think we all find our way. And one of the big quotes that I love is, you know, we sometimes we lose ourselves, but it's up to us to find our way back. And I'm always very big on life as an art form. We're all here to apply our crafts. And I look at it from a stance too as well. Our crafts, whether it be I do a podcast here, I leave one, I come here, I do LFC, CCW, Capital Championship Wrestling. I'm over here, I'm over there. Like with you, modeling, muscle sport, you're part of the LFC family, you get a lot of the alerts. LFCfights.com, when's the next event? Social media, boom, boom, boom. There's that camaraderie, and the bond of that is absolutely endless, and it's special, and it's something not to take for granted. And like you mentioned, I'm also going to bring this up, social media side of things, whether you're getting into your DMs, and I'm going to talk about slide, slide, slippity slide, rest in peace, Coolio, goo goo, dial, goo goo doll style, so why don't you slide? Well, John Resnick, huh? But at the end of the day, it's one of those things too as well. Whether you get the messages of social media, I think in today's day and age, in today's society, there needs to be more of this. I'm putting unity up in here, folks, instead of this. So, But that's yeah, the way, yeah. unfortunately, the world is. Everything is nowadays, so unfortunately. I, I love how... <laughs> During, I think, our very first podcast together, you asked me if I was a lover or a fighter. Yes, that's right. But I'm finding more and more that I'm becoming a fighter and less, less of a lover because the love that we put out there <laughs> <laughs> has been torn to shreds where you're like, you know what? You want to fight? Let's fight. Um, so I guess now's a good time to let you know that I've actually started training. Oh, my so. goodness. <laughs> Okay, hold oh on. Oh, my God. So <laughs> part of the weight loss has actually been part of stunt training and stunt fighting and Krav Maga because not with just the modeling, but I've been acting as well. I just had my premiere of Good Black air on CBC here in Toronto, part of the Absolutely Canadian block. It was known as Being Black in 2022, in Toronto, sorry. Being Black in Toronto 2022. And... You know, there are roles that I really want. I want to be an action star. I want to break my foot like Jackie Chan did. I want to break a fist every once in a while. Not on people, but you get what I mean. I want to break wood and stuff. But I guess going forward, you guys will see a little bit more something different going forward. <laughs> so. so what you're saying is pretty much, Sean, call her up. Get that LFC debut coming. Got to come uh, out. Uh -huh. I don't know if I can do with crowds yet. I, I don't know about that. One one fight at a time. <laughs> I was going to say, man, see, you're calling yourself a fighter. There's the perfect theme song. Put on some Christina Aguilera. Makes me that much stronger. Yep. Huh? Yep. There you go. As long as it's not stronger by Britney, I think we're okay. <laughs> you're, not, you're not stronger than yesterday? No, it's nothing but my way. Put, get yourself a chair. I'll do the chair entrance. I'll spin around on the chair. Yay. <laughs> but no, I think that's all. <laughs> That's awesome. I and mean, you put out a lot of great photos on the red carpet. You're acting now. You're really transitioning. I love that stuff. Really looking elegant with the dresses held to the air. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, that was uh, that was a spectacular night. Kudos to Mr. Mark Samuels, who actually wrote and directed the film. He's a fantastic <laughs> cinematographer, <laughs> cinematographer and filmmaker. I can't even say that word. He's going to laugh at me now. But um, yeah, there's... Like I said, there's so much work that goes in, people don't see. You see a finished product, just like with LFC. When I see the clips of the fight, I get to see the victory afterwards. I get to see the belt. I don't get to see these incredible athletes, these incredible women training, getting ready. If they get injured, how they mend. Um, how they feel about the news if, you know, they're told they have to be careful when they fight. These are some things 
that they have to focus on. This is what they're working on, what they have to be wary of, cautious. And I think that's why with LFC, I still wanted to come to Toronto, by the way, Sean, <coughs> Michael. <coughs> Sean, more Sean. Um, I'm okay though. Um, <laughs> it's just, I would love to see a documentary on these women. So I'm putting that out there into the universe. Sean, let it manifest for Stephanie Ferreira, just putting it out there. But, you know, if I were to do a project, I would want to have a project of LFC done. That I think other than bringing the entire championship to Toronto, please, <laughs> that's what I want to manifest. I want to see a documentary showcasing all these lovely, lovely athletes and just them kicking ass, taking names and just being these incredible multifaceted ladies. And I just like the utmost respect to them all. Thank you. No, well, here's the thing. And I will say this little cheap plug ski for the LFC. If you go into LFCfights.com, there's going to be more added. Check out the LFC Exposed reality show. That is one of the biggest, great documentaries of the LFC is LFC Exposed, which goes into every fight every what have you so it's it's a nice little intricacy but the documentary of lfc from lingerie fighting championships it's, it's an inception like 2013 boom to here to now i think what what sean does and especially with stuff that's going to be added which shh, we'll get sean on here to talk about that but a lot of the stuff that's going to be coming i think a lot of people are really going to enjoy whether they see past and present and for those that are new to the product we get to see yourself and many great people so there's always something for everybody as far as a variety goes and i've always compared it to the lfl here's badass women playing football kicking ass and taking names and i think what's great about the product too is as well with what i encompass and what everybody encompasses the lingerie side of things again some people will say what they will but for you Steph. Stephanie Ferrer, you're training, you got your Krav Maga, you're idolizing, you're also putting a little more influence with your Krav Maga, like your hero, Jolene the Valkyrie Hex, who also does her thing thing with Krav Maga. So you're training baby steps, you know what I'm saying? Because this also brings to possibly a new fighter in the future. So we're, we're seeing the groundwork here, man. We're seeing the development. There's, there's, there's a little bit of foundation going on, just because <laughs> I think when you're introdu introduced to something and people start reaching out to you saying, you know, I would love to see you fight. And at first, I'm sure you know this, but at first we had someone last year kind of constantly messaging me saying you versus this person, you okay. fighting that person. Yep. And I kind of thought, you know, maybe if I had it in me to actually be a fighter, I wonder what kind of fighter I would be. I want to be a successful fighter. I don't want to be like, um, that movie Mortal Kombat with uh, the very bad Sonya. <laughs> you know, I kind of want to look, you know, not like Charlie's Angels with Cameron Diaz. I kind of want to look like a real fighter. I want to look like the next Bruce Lee and Jackie Chan and like really nailing the opponent kind of thing. But I have to learn how to take a punch and not break down into tears as soon as I get hit because I cry when a fly lands on me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right, well, we'll bring this up here, love or not a fighter, but now I'm a fighter, and I'm ready to wreck people. I'm swole. I got the gains. You're like Robert Frank. For those who have not seen Robert Frank, the old bodybuilder swoles the goal, sizes the prize. It's gains a clock, motherfucker. Let's go. I feel like I'm talking to like a mini Robert Frank right now because you're getting to that <laughs> zone when you're ready to just fuck shit up, and I can appreciate this. I love this. But here's the thing, too, as well. There's so many different... And what I love about LOC, too, is there's so many different body types. There's so many different athletes. There's so many different women. And I think with you, there's so many people that could be matched up. Like I'm going to say right now, you would be the perfect booty camp participant with what we're talking about here. Because booty camp is a lot of the prospects against the veterans. So, I mean, they're matching you up, man. So when that does happen, and we're manifesting here, like we're manifesting, putting the feelers out here. When that does happen, you'll you'll be ready. I know you're ready. You're squaring up. Okay. All right. Well, I mean, it's <laughs> my nine year old is laughing at me in the background as I do that. <laughs> so you can tell where my family is for standing on this. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, it's just, you know, when I was younger, I used to get teased a lot. I was shoved in a locker when I was in grade nine because I was smaller than everybody else. I also had a boy's mushroom cut kind of bowl cut look so you know were you a boy were you a girl that's how they teased me because I wasn't developed yet and <laughs> you know people were afraid by my voice you know because they'd be like hey you know why don't you but obviously I don't sound like that when I was younger I sounded a little bit more husky because I was also a lot larger and stuff like that too but 
you know, looking back now, it's like if I would have kept that little bit of fight a little bit longer, yeah, I think I'd probably be doing time by now. <laughs> well, first of all, you're a hockey fan. Let's let's talk about this here because <laughs> hockey fights. I mean, come on now, man, Miss Miss Maple Leafs over here, the the queen of the Maple Leafs over here. So you got that scrap in you. You know what I'm saying? I think you're down to get into some kerfluffles. I'm gonna put that word out there. I think you're down to get into some kerfluffles. <laughs> I mean, right now I want to fight against the team because they're not doing so well. <laughs> I had to bring it. Okay, first of all, as you know, it's New Yorker here and my best friend Steve. Islanders, baby. Let's go Islanders, LGI. You know I got to bring it up with your, with your mate, police man. What's going on? What's the deal? I don't know. Like, I mean, there are some days that I refuse to put the game on just because I'm afraid of what's going to happen. Um, but I've, I've decided that I might have to take a break from those kind of sports because, I mean, I work the Blue Jays season, we got kicked off and like after the second game of the playoffs. So, you know, it's my Maple Leafs hockey. It's so hard because I don't see what happens in the dressing room. I only see the product out on the ice. And what happens is when you have so many athletes out, whether it's on the ice, on the court, it's so hard to contain the different personalities. They all have the same job, but they picture it being done differently. And I feel like that's what's happening with the team right now. They're kind of looking out for each of their own as opposed to saying, let's look at it collectively. So, but I miss my team. <laughs> I feel you 100% on that. Ooh, okay. So here's how I feel about this. So with everything that's going on with the Maple Leafs and Islanders, as I just moved my mic stand out of here, sorry about that, folks. But the thing, <laughs> the thing is, the the amazing thing about the what the Islanders are doing in the hockey. I mean, it's the, what I always love about it too. Is now I'm not the biggest hockey fan like Steve is, but I've always appreciated the sport and just going there and the competitive drive because each and every year it's hockey season. It's a great time. The fans are there. There's a lot of anguish. There's a lot of emotions being evoked as it should. And then there's people like you who just refuse to watch the game because I've seen a lot of people who <laughs> refuse to watch a lot of hockey games. I have seen my best friend Steve groan and moan when the Islanders lost. It's a little anguish like this. It's some of the best facials ever and i laugh at him but i feel bad at him at the same time but i digress but no that that's the beauty of competition and stuff and that's where i was going with the scrap side of things you can just go into any fight like it's a freaking hockey fight and just dominate the paint man dominate the paint man <laughs> my thing is with with hockey fights yeah i love i love a good hockey scrap especially with goons i love hockey goons to a t i love that they don't know how to skate they don't know how to shoot they don't know how to score but yet yeah, they're out there to do the gritty. You're going after my captain. I am coming after you. I've got your number. And as soon as the ref's not looking, I'm planting you. That's it. I'm knocking you to the ice. We're done. But I also love the hockey athletes or any athlete that will completely troll the fans. Where, you know, they'll grab the opponent and they've got them by the jersey. And it looks like they're just ready to start. Instead, they start dancing together. Okay. That is something 100% I would do. Like, if you were to say to me, Steph, your first fight is going to be against Jolene Hex, I would be like, okay, let's get off. And then I'd be like, okay, and twerk, and twerk, and twerk, and twerk. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah. Well, have you, have you seen... Have you seen Jolene's finisher? It's like a triangle choke, but like she twerks on him. For a perfect example, go back and watch LFC 30 Born to be Wild, Jolene and Allie Baby Doll Parks in Allie's retirement match. She took her out with a little triangle. She put her butt in her face. It was the twerk city, man. It was like a twerk version of the triangle choke. I have never seen anything like this before in my life. So, I mean, now you want to add the twerkage to it. I see you. Because I, I, like, I, I would never want to fight Jolene because I think she's incredible. And I know that she can pack a mean punch. So, yep. I don't want to be on the other side of the kick, the punch, the, the, the how do you call it? What, well, well, the, the twerkage. The twerkage. Right? The like twerkage. A it's a triangle <laughs> choke with the twerk. It's the twerkage. But, yeah, no. Well, That's the best name ever. Right, it is. <laughs> <laughs> I'm stealing that. The torquage. You can, the torquage. But no, that's the thing too. Like her last quarter at LFC 36, like when she won the title and she won the booty cam chain from Jenny Bloody Valentine was a choke. Now Jenny didn't tap out, passed out to the paint. So there's many variations to what she does and one of the many, a lot of the LFC ladies do. Which I got to bring this also to LFC because Girl Goyle, man, I'm going to put it on the screen. So folks, when you <laughs> see this, you'll see, boom, it goes right to Stephanie here and her lovely photo here by the one and only T-Bell himself. And no, I'm not talking about Taco Bell. I'm talking about Tommy Bellart. My dude did a great drawing of you with the Girl Goyle style. I am 
recorded it and to the LFC Instagram and on the TikTok and Twitter, the Halloween aspects of Tommy Bell and everything that he's accomplished from the artwork and going into LFC 35 Booty Camp 3D last Halloween. So for you, being a piece in his artwork, his illustrations being the best representation of his presentation, on Tommy Bell got your spot on, Girl Goyle. What were your thoughts being involved in a Tommy Bell original? First, I thought it was a joke because I'm like, how am I getting this? privilege how am i getting this right now because when we were constantly communicating and you know he was telling me his ideas and i was having such a hard time choosing i was like tommy i trust you run with whatever idea i love them all so i'm gonna be selfish and i'll just be like i want them all so i'm like in order to save yourself that kind of work you choose the best thing so when he told me the girl goyle I was like, okay. And then he'd do his lives and show, you know, from start of, you know, the first sketch from the original photo, which was taken by Daryl Pizak. Um, and to see him turn me into the scroll goyle, you know, it's exceptional art. And I love drawings. I'm not very gifted in terms of drawing. <laughs> Tommy will tell you that. Like, I cannot draw stick people to save my life. Um, <laughs> <laughs> as embarrassing as it is but to be part of that selection was just so overwhelmingly good and I say that with the utmost love because everybody wants to be a piece of artwork everybody wants to be incorporated some way somehow even you know comic books for the longest time I want to be a comic book character because I grew up on comics Batman and and Spider-Man Spider-Man was my all-time favorite growing up the Hulk, the Grey Hulk, he wasn't green originally. Like when I see artwork like that, because I had seen what he had done for LFC, I thought, wow, this is incredible. And I followed him just because I wanted to see who else he was going to draw, who's next, what ideas are coming to his mind, what do the girls have in mind? And when I saw the finished product, like I, like I'm still feeling it, like I'm actually getting chills and goosebumps it felt so genuinely nice to be part of that. And I've had people say, you know, I want to draw you like the French girls, like, you know, as if I'm Rose, you know, talking to Jack from the Titanic, or you kind of go, you know, you, you don't have to draw me or it's okay. You know, I'm, I'm sure you've got some weird thing that you want to draw, like an anime style photo of me, which I don't want to see. But when it's someone like Tommy, where, you know, I consider him like one of our the greatest painters of our time. And it's so sad to see that we don't see that as much as we need to. You know, it's we need to see more art. And when Tommy said, you know, it's going to be your turn, you're up next, I kind of went, this is actually <laughs> happening. Mm -hmm. What do I do? <laughs> like, it, it's one thing when you imagine it and you want it to happen, but you're kind of like, nah, I don't think I'm going to ask. And then when it finally happens, you're like, oh, this is this is happening. I don't know how to deal with this. And the results were greater than what I could have ever imagined. Right. And I, I will say this as someone who's also we both now have been added to his collection. He did an amazing piece. And then, boom, you're going to see another photo here on the screen, folks. Beauty, strength and dominance for the podcast, including Jolie and the Valkyrie Hex, including Jenny Bloody Valentine, Audrey Monique, Bella Hake. That dude has such a great intricate to detail. Now, he's not just on LFC. He's drawn many miles like Andrea Christine. He's done many, many of talents on that side of things. What I always love about him is he works with you. He provides the live video. He's like, boom, what do you want to do here? Let's do this. Let's do that. It's the accommodation comfortability factor that I mentioned that really makes you feel like you're a part of something special, which it actually is. And the thing like him is he really pays attention. He loves what he does. And that dude is just going to continue to flourish and he's going to continue to shine. So I'll say this right now. Much love to you, Tommy, and follow at Tommy Bell Art on the Twitter, the Instagram, wherever you get them on social medias. And I'm going to put this little video in here as well for y'all can see a little Halloween, which is brew. And here's what I like about this. You'll like this. So for Halloween, when I was still making this, right, this is a little behind the scenes, folks. So I'm a 90s kid, 2001. Halloween Town 2 Calabar's Revenge. Yes, I'm talking about Kimberly J. Brown and the late great Debbie Reynolds. That was the song that was featured in the party scene. I had to do it. You know me, Steph. I had to put a little Disney <laughs> in there. <laughs> you know what? It's just when I saw that video come out, I was like, what's this? And as soon as I start to watch, I was like, oh, la la. And then I got your message after the fact. And I'm like, oh, shit. Like, this I made is this incredible. Girl. Like, 
you're in this for a reason, Stephanie. Like you might have to watch this. I see LFC and I'm like, I'm not part of LFC. And then I see <laughs> I see LFC and I'm like, oh Tommy Bellart, there we are. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, no, it's, it's, I get I'm, I get giddy when it comes to LFC. Anytime I get a message from you, Sean, if the girls, any one of those athletes from LFC likes a tweet that I mentioned in and it pops up on my phone as a notification, I practically fall out of my seat. <laughs> so they're like, oh my God, they're tweeting me. They're liking something that I'm involved with, how it might be my handle, but I'm, I'm running with it. I'm happy with this. So <laughs> fangirl moment. So, um, yeah, that might be another reason why LFC and me might not work out is that I might fangirl and need a stretcher by the time I even get close to the ring. Okay, so I'll make a comparison. And I like <laughs> her because she's, she's fought in Sturgis. So my Richards, who was one of the girls that fought in Sturgis, she actually started as one of the ring girls for the, last, for the first event in Sturgis. Then she transitioned to the fighting role. And I love her, but here's the thing that I, I, I was kind of am about her. Mai's a great talent, great person, lovely spirit, but you can't keep smiling when you're in there. This is why I say this, because you're in a fight. The smile is infectious, and I love it, but you can't be smiling like while you're in there. Like, you know, you're ready to go. You're ready to scrap, if you will. You know what I'm saying? We're tired. I'm going to use another word here, Steph. We're tired of the bitch assness. So the bitch assness <laughs> needs to be taken care of here, and you can't keep smiling when we're doing it. So you got to wipe the smile a little bit. I know you're fun. I know you're excited, but hey, wipe the smile off your face. This is not a vitamin C moment. We're not pulling a smile on your face. What you're going to do, say what you're going to do. It's gone. It's got to be gone. <laughs> Too late. No, it's going to be worse. <laughs> that would be me. I'd be like, um, can't fight today. How come? <laughs> Too giddy. Too giddy. <laughs> Just give me the sign. I'll be the ring girl for now. <laughs> Move. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my goodness. Well, that's actually, that's a great point because I think, and what I've learned as doing the announcing stuff now for the booty camp shows, what I've always learned, and I say this, like we talk about the production side of things, what goes in front of the camera, behind the camera, every part of it has a role, whether it's ring girl, announcer, commentator, what have you, everybody has a role. So everybody would be filling their roles in an amazing fashion. So I feel you get that ring card girl, man. Do you think, you know, Hey, huh? <laughs> you get to be turned into a hockey player, just body check the for ring girl. <laughs> like I, I'm not fighting today, but move. <laughs> I, to be honest with you, like my my kids and I were talking about this the other day, going, you know, how do you think they brought props into fighting? Right. You know, especially when we watched the old wrestling matches with them taking the folding chairs and whipping yep. it across each other's back. And I kind of thought to myself, can you imagine if it was the ring girls that were fighting over the sign for which round it was? I would say, like I was telling my kids, I said, I bet that's actually the reason why they start to incorporate chairs and, you know, okay, it looks weird for guys to be fighting over, you know, a piece of cardboard. So why don't we incorporate chairs in a fight instead? I mean, I would be cool with that. I mean, also, <laughs> well, it would be the interesting standpoint because everybody is competitive over something. So if you're a ring girl and it's like, it's my round, just my round. You know what I'm saying? Like that. That's an interesting take. I mean, you can put a lot of spins into everything, so I feel you. And I got to point this out because you mentioned before, like, a bowl cut when you were, like, a kid. <laughs> I'm going to say this right No, we have to talk about this because this is something we've talked about before. So when I was a kid, I'm going to say this right now, and I love my hair, whether it's short or long. I, I do my thing. But when I was a kid, you could see old photos of me. I kind of had, like, the penis tip. And what I mean by that is it's, like, the long <laughs> hair out. And, yeah, and – and I'm going to say this because we've talked about it before. I looked like Aaron Carter in Crazy Little Party Girl. Oh, how I love you. So I, I was like a mini Aaron Carter before he got drugged out and tattoos on his face. But like I, I look like a mini Aaron Carter. And I'm like, I'm not going to lie. It was my party. I was coming to get it, you know. But, hey, I, I, I had the penis step. So you can have the bold cut. I'll have the penis step. Look at our friend Tommy Bell, for God's sake. He put up a photo of him from the 80s. I said, Tommy, look at you, man. You had hair. And you looked like you were. No, here's here. Hold on here. I said, Tommy, you had hair. And I said, you look like you were a lost member of a new wave rock band. You know, God bless you. Put on some Eagles, sing some Hotel California. But no, <laughs> that's, that's, that's the thing. So we all have our little hairs and we all have our little style, so to speak. It's the awkward phases. So to speak. I mean, I, I, I wish I, I could say it was an awkward phase that I brought on myself, but right. it wasn't. I actually, I actually brought on an awkward phase back in August. I actually had a, a shoot recent. Uh, that, in August, and I decided to put red dye in my hair. It was like red uh, hairspray. Okay. I went inside the pool, and my hair bled. So the back of my bikini, which was a, a sparkling baby blue, actually ended up pink, and so was my skin because the color had 
bled out so much. So let's talk about awkward hair for a minute there. Oh my goodness. Right, we gonna... need to challenge Tommy Bell Art to put yes. on a mullet oh. and do a podcast with us. I get think you, we need to do that. Get yourself a mullet, Tommy. You'll get you on the pop culture show with myself, <laughs> Stephanie, and you, as we've talked about. Now, here's the thing, too. He could go out full Billy Billy Ray Cyrus of this, man. Talk about his achy, breaky heart. You know what I'm saying? I just don't think you understand. <laughs> so, I mean, hey, if you want to rock that, get yourself a mullet <laughs> in the back, man. In the front and on the back, baby. But, no, that's the <laughs> I'm gonna be pulling. I'm gonna be Ric Flair in the background, going woo! Woo! <laughs> oh my god! But yeah, we got we got the mullets, the bowl cups, and the penis tips. Th there's a joke in ours. So a guy with a mullet top. Of penis, oh god, the mullets! They all walk into a the bar. bar. <laughs> uh -oh. Actually, no. They walk into an LFC fight. Oh, so we we got a go. script to write out. We got a script to write out, man. Oh, God. For those who've been to an LFC event, let me tell you something also about Tommy Bell real quickly. So you saw the photo of us last October, my ring announcing yep. debut. Tommy did his thing as a judge. I'm going to say right now we were the two sharpest dressed men. Put on some ZZ top in that building that night. Don't hate the players. Hate the game. So, <laughs> <laughs> so Tommy Bell was the judge. He was judging. He was a judge and the son of a gun that night. But let me tell you something here, Miss Stephanie Ferreira. Go back and watch it, lfcfights.com. It's LFC 35 Booty Camp 3D, baby. Tommy had a tough decision to make in the last bout. It was uh, Jennifer Jennifer Thomas, a.k.a. Jenny Bloody Valentine, as La Scorpia against Volcana, the first ever Lucha Lingerie bout. My man had a tough decision. Jennifer Thomas said they got a little thing thing. They're friends. Looking at him, Tommy had that face. I felt like I was watching Lady in the Tramp. All he needed was some spaghetti and bada bing, bada boom, we have a little kissy. The man looked <laughs> like he was falling in love, and I tease him for that all the time, and I love you, Tommy. <laughs> but God dang, man, it, it was a sight to see. So go back and watch Tommy do his thing and go watch a lot of the great stuff with LFC. Man, you know, it, it's great to see what we're doing now, where we're coming from, where we are as people. You're doing your modeling thing. I'm still doing the thing thing here. But what I love about it, too, as well, and with everything coming back into fruition, this is where we'll go with a little some pop culture here because we were talking about this for the show. And it kind of pisses me off a little. But I'm going to say this, the Backstreet Boys, and I'm rocking the T-shirt. I do it as only as I can do. <laughs> say something. Come get at me, if you will. But the Backstreet Boys finally put out a Christmas album. They had recorded, I think, about a year or two ago, but couldn't put it out because everything going on with the COVID. But, man, they brought it and out. I'm listening to it. I listened to, you know, Last Christmas, their version of Wham. It was good, real good. But here's my thing. comes out in October. It ain't even Halloween yet, and we're putting out a Christmas CD. And it annoys okay. the shit out of me. Go ahead. I guess now's a good time to let you guys know I did all my Christmas shopping today. Oh, for, yes. you know, all right. What is it with the October Christmas time before Halloween? I know a lot of girls that do this. I, I do. I by girls I've graduated with, girls I've become friends with in the podcast world. What's with <laughs> and what is with the Halloween? Uh, not the Halloween. I'm sorry, Christmas shopping like early. What, what's the deal? October even? Not even November. October, man. We actually had this discussion with uh, a neighbor of ours because my dad lives in a building over, and okay. someone was setting up the house for Christmas before Halloween, and you know my dad was kind of like, "Hey, what's going on?" You know, Halloween comes first. Then the guy goes, I'm dressing up my house as Christmas. That way I'm saving time, but it's two for one. Mm -hmm. And my dad's like, oh, shit. I should have thought of that. And then for Halloween, when we were all dressed up, I dressed up as one of Fred from Hocus Pocus. My kids went as a slice of pepperoni pizza, and the other went as a banana. We don't make sense, but it worked. We went as whatever we wanted to go as. It's and people were dressed up as Santa Claus. There were people walking outside on Halloween dressed up as Santa Claus. And I find that Halloween comes very quickly. And Christmas is a very special time for a lot of families. I know a lot of families don't celebrate it for whatever reason, and whether it's religious or, you know, uh, a loss of a family member or whatever the case may be. Um, with us, I love Christmas time. I think it's one of the times of the year where I'm actually looking forward to the, to it the most. Like, I don't look forward to my birthday because I'm getting older. I'm kidding. I look forward to my birthday gifts, shower me with gifts. Um, but Christmas is a very special time with us. It means that there's going to be more family time. We're going to be together. Um, I lose my dining room with the Christmas village. I put up my Christmas tree after, after our... Um, Veterans Day or Memorial Memorial Day, whatever the case may be. But 
you know, with Christmas, I, I've already done a Christmas shoot, which I'll be sending you the picture shortly. Um, and it's just, I look forward to it, but I don't want to hear any Christmas music. I'll be honest with you. I don't want to hear Mariah Carey singing yet. Yep, I mean, I'm, like, I'm, there. I'm there right there with you. Like, I was just happy because the Backstreet, and I'll admit, I love me some Backstreet Boys. I like all types of music, but Backstreet will always hold a special place in my heart, all right? So <laughs> they put out the Christmas album finally. I listened to it. I liked it. But the thing, too, again, October, but I don't want to hear, like you mentioned, Mariah Carey. I'm not in the mood to start hearing some Nat King Cole, Chestnuts Roasting on Open Fire, and I love that. I love many different Christmas songs, but not yet. I mean, the the network that has, um, I think it's, was it BAC or whatever the hell it is, the one that Candace Cameron Bure, uh, that one, my, oh, my land of DJ Tanner there, has, like, all her Christmas movies out already. And I'm like, man, this friggin' <laughs> Like, she's putting out her Christmas movies, and here's a Christmas movie over here, Christmas movie over there. I'm just like, no. Like, and I don't want all-day Christmas in October. You know what I'm saying? I don't. And the same with music. Like, I don't want to hear it right now. We got two more months. <laughs> Actually, to be fair, I think what it is, especially with the Halloween and the Christmas stuff, like, we have Christmas in July. Like, we have the Hallmark Channel here in, in Canada, which actually drives me wild. I get maybe about five or six casting calls per summer for, you know, background to be in a Hallmark Christmas movie. Oh boy. And you know, it's, it's hot. You want to be rocking a bikini or a speedo, but yet you have to make it look like it's, you know, Christmas <laughs> where you're like, great, I get to wear a parka in 32 degree <laughs> Celsius weather. I don't know how hot that is Fahrenheit. And then, you know, I start my Halloween in August. Because that's when the most campaigns come out for acting and for modeling. And, you know, they want to see the spooky shit. But, I mean, this month, I mean, it's it's in between. It's in between Halloween. It's in between Christmas. But I'm going to go watch Ice Nine Kills again for the, for the second time in a year. And they're all about scary movies and scary music that coincide with these uh, films. And... You know, we go from Christmas in July to Halloween in August, Halloween again in October, and then Christmas starting from November until the New Year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's it's a crazy, it's a crazy ordeal, and we get the Hallmark Channel here too. Yeah, and, and it's funny too about it because you're missing out one detail here. Because if I know you, Miss Stephanie Ferrer, besides the fact that we get to see the Hallmark Channel, all these great things that you got over there in the Canada man, repping in Toronto, man, we gotta bring this up here. You're also rocking your old school much music. Get your Ed the Sock going. The the Presidente of the Ed the Sock fan club. She puts on a little Ricky J. No means no, and he's talking about what the hell's this douchebag here doing, skating on the damn ice. You know, watch it's old school Ricky J. No reason. I no. I love Ed the Sock, and I mean anything political, and that guy just rips everybody a new it's hilarious back backside. But uh, I mean, I've been following that guy since I was a teenager. I used to get grounded <laughs> because I would watch his segments. I would watch his Friday night uh, his Friday night show. Oh man, I got grounded so much because of that sock and. How many guys would say that they got grounded because of a sock? True. Well, right. I mean, you guys get grounded for a different reason. I followed <laughs> a, a sock with a cigar sticking out of his mouth, and like people used to make fun of, you know, the the herpes jacuzzi. That's oh. what they used to call all <laughs> the jacuzzi, and I used to laugh about it. And, you know, in hindsight, like I look at my much music and, you know, it's changed so much. Now I think the most that I watch on that channel is like The Simpsons or um, what's the other show? I think Family Guy they play or Married with Children. Right. Well, <laughs> but it's no longer about the music. So I don't get to see Ricky Jay going, no means no. Anymore. Hey, man, I, that's why you got YouTube. But yeah, that it's the same with MTV. It's the same with anything. Everybody's more now on like reality TV or just TV based. But, you know, like the, like the special for me was like watching the right in a row, the VH1, MTV, BET, MTV, too much music. And I mean, watching the countdown, then all of a sudden here comes snow. Yeah, I'm talking about that snow. Because everybody wants to be like you. I want to say it in my goal. That's, that's that thing. Or you get sole decision. We've talked about who it's kind of crazy and faded. Oh, I know. I miss them so much. The jam. I mean, I love Trevor Guthrie, yes. but I need Soul Decision to come back to my life. I wasn't ready for them to just disappear, fall off the face of the earth. It was them, 98 degrees. I mean, when you sent me that clip last year, oh. <laughs> and then 
I posted it on Instagram and they reposted my story. I'm telling you, I fangirled for about a good week. So to, <laughs> to paint the picture here, why this is so funny. Last year when 98 Degrees came out with Where Do You Wanna Go? Over the Summer, which is a great song because it's just two minutes of them driving down the road and it's very summer vibe-ish. You know what I'm saying? The pool and everything. I sent it to this one. I said, Steph, I know you would appreciate this. It's so good because it's, it's a new 98 degrees. Like it's so good. Like they hadn't put out a song in a while, and here's some summer vibes at 98 degrees. And mind you, most of them are in their 40s or getting to their 50s, but they still fucking rock it, and it's awesome. So here's some 98 degrees. She puts it out there, puts it on her Instagram, and 98 degrees friggin' put it in their story. And this one was all giddy and giggly. <laughs> Like she just had a friggin' I'll put it like this to put a New York reference here. You were g giggly and all, you know, giddy like a girl at a summer jam concert and seeing like No Authority and like all these boy bands like Daniel Bedingfield and all these people at like a summer jam or a winter jam. Oh my god! Like when I fangirl, I go hard too. Like I do like the whole like hummingbird. As, oh my god! Oh my god! I don't scream at the top of my lungs, but I kind of like hyperventilate and I'm like, oh my god, kind of thing. And the thing is, when I do that. I can feel it, and I actually annoy myself. Like, girl, get a grip, cut it up. These people are human. Yep. Meanwhile, I'm like, <gasps> okay. So, funny story about that. I had this. <laughs> now, I love interviewed a lot of wrestlers. I've interviewed a lot of musicians. Like when I interviewed Alex Solowitz from Together or Noah Basher from Together. I'm talking about. I know my calculus. It says you plus me equals us. You have to understand. Like, it's a different thing with wrestling because I've known a lot of the talents and see them grown up. Because being in the Northeast, there's a lot of independent wrestling. But when you're seeing somebody that you've either seen on TV or you listen to their music on the radio, it's a different kind of vibe because you grew up with their music. Like, you know what I'm saying? It has that different feel of like fanboying or fangirling out. So I, I can respect that. I don't do the whole thing like you just did there, but I, I get that. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm, I'm in there on the inside, if you will. You know I saying? actually, recently, I had someone come forward and they liked a picture of mine on Instagram. And I followed this person for years. I love their TV shows. I love the content that they put out there. And the fact that this person reached out and said, I love this photo of you. I'm such a fan. I actually almost passed out. I like looked at my husband. And I'm like, I'm going down for the count. And my husband's like, what's wrong? And I'm like, this person just said that they love this photo. They love the message. And they're a fan now. And he just kind of looked at me. He was like, cool. And I'm like, how are you not reacting? I need you to react. <laughs> I mean, like. I, I spent an incredible summer. I got to see many people coming to my workplace and I got to, you know, deal with them with white gloves and everything. And as soon as they kind of noticed that you're a fan and they're like, it's okay, I'm a normal person. Sit down and talk to me. You're like, oh my God, I got to turn off the fandom and be like super serious. And you're like, <laughs> How's it going? Meanwhile, like you can feel it, and you're just like, I'm, I'm just dying. Like if Miss Jolene Hex comes my way, I'm gonna have to try to be super cool and badass that, that I have to look chill. Like so. Meanwhile, I'm gonna be dying on the inside, going, Oh my god, oh my god, Michael Larkin, I need a fan. I got you. <laughs> I would gladly give you a hand. Well, I mean, it's the oh same my god. Thing. Well, it's the same thing when I first met her, at, like back in May for the booty camp thing. Just came in, gave her a hug. I mean, that last stilling shot that you see from booty camp four is her and I in the ring. So I mean, like, I know these people, the acquaintance, but I can I can see because everybody has that larger than life. As I do that, the larger than life effect about them, no matter what avenue they are. So I get it, and I think and I think it's wonderful, and I think that's what makes this such a great community, huh? So. My if I took a picture with her, it would be her by herself smiling and me just like <laughs> on the floor in the background, possibly with a smile on my face. Like, it's... yep. <laughs> I think that might be my next theme for a shoot. I'm calling it now. So let me message a photographer, see if they want to capture that. Richard, LFC photographer. Richard, I'm talking to you, Richard. Get a photo. <laughs> So um, it'll be my new profile picture, my new Abby and everything. I would die, woman. I would die. Yes. <laughs> so I will say this. 
as we get the little giggling. Oh, my goodness. Before we close this out, and Steph, I will say this. I always love having you on the show. You're always a blast to talk pop culture, music, LFC, fangirling, fanboying, and also the fact that you had a bowl cut and I had a penis tip and Tommy's got his hair, a new wave hair. I put it in a podcast, put it in a bar. We're all good. Anytime I always have you on, you make me smile, you make me giggle as I am right now, and I always have, enjoy having you. So you're always welcome on here. The overture is here. Let's let's rock out another one in the future, okay? Definitely. Before we close this out also as well, even besides the fact of exchanging pleasantries and just doing what cool-ass people like ourselves do, us friendliness, our friends, I feel like friggin' Houdini. How many of us have them friends, friends we can depend on? Somebody put on a next Friday film? Please promote where we can follow you on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Even if you're doing a little tickety talk, you can promote that as well. Where can we find you, Steph? You can find me on Twitter or Instagram at least scroll stuff. Okay, perfect. Simple, straight to the point. I got you. Leafs girl stuff. She's rocking the hockey vibes, even though she doesn't even want to watch the Maple Leafs because <laughs> the fact that they suck. I, all right. And again. Oh, hold okay. on. Now you want to go because you said they what? It was me five words. So. <laughs> Let's see, we're dancing again. I look like I'm trying to do the, what's that from the cha-cha slide? Oh, the little slide to the left, slide to the right. Yeah, but... Um, which one? Oh, I can't remember. Cha cha. Oh, reverse. First reverse. reverse. Uh, no, cha cha. Cha cha. <laughs> cha cha. <laughs> <The cha-cha. laughs> oh, We're not taking that out. That's staying. In the no, show. we absolutely are, man. I felt like I was watching one of the Gibb <laughs> brothers, man. Shadow dancing. That's what that was. Shadow dancing. But- <laughs> So follow Steph, follow the top Maple Leaf fan here and the top one of the top models going today. And I mean that. I love you because, man, we're putting out a lot of great photos here. Sensual vibes, little immaculate vibes. Put her in a dress. Put her in some lingerie. Put her in a Chucky outfit. Put her in some Star Trek. The force is strong with this one. Go all out with it, baby. Cosplay it up. Give Steph a follow. I'm talking about Instagram. I'm talking about Twitter. Check out lfcfights.com. Links will be in the description for the Twitter, Instagram, the old tickety talk, which includes some Jolene photos. She's fainting. You already know what it is. So for, <laughs> yes. No, no. That. <laughs> <laughs> and give a shout out once more and follow Tommy Bellard for the great drawing that he has done of Steph and many of the amazing girls. You'll see the full video here in this podcast today. So as I always say to end this show, And I do this for all you pervs, which I'm just going to use this now because we were talking about demographics and subsets before. And you know where I got to reach here because I do it for all you pervs. Put that on a T-shirt. All you pervs. (laughs) The beauty, strength, and dominance, the three elements that make women the work out art that they are. No bitch assness, only realness. Stephanie Ferreira, I include you in those sentiments. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks for having me. You're so welcome. I do this for you pervs, and I'm out.